You are assembling this right now across the bay Correct. in Alameda, and you are setting sail in September for this garbage patch. Talk to me about the technology behind this and how the cleanup will work. Sure. So in the past, people proposed to clean this up with, uh, with boats and nets to sort of go out and fish for plastic. But the thing is that the ocean is so vast, uh, this area is twice the size of Texas, that if you were to do this, this would take 80,000 years. So what we do is we've developed a passive system that uses very long U-shaped uh, floating barriers that are pushed around by the natural ocean currents uh, so that the nature can really do the hard work for us. So that way we can first concentrate the plastic before we take it out. And now we see that if we were to deploy a fleet of 60 of these systems, we should be able to clean up half the Great Pacific Garbage Patch in just five years' time. Talk to us about some of the efforts to clean this up in the past and why they haven't worked. Yeah, well, so the, the ocean is very big, so um, you know, it's a vast area. It would take 80,000 years to clean up just this one patch if you were to do it that way. Uh, it would be very expensive, it would kill a lot of sea life, create emissions, so not such an attractive uh, proposal. So you think that you can clean up how much of this? Um, so we think we can clean up half of it in five years and eventually get to a 90% reduction by 2040. Now some in the scientific community are skeptical that you can do that. What is your response to that? Sure. Uh, I mean, we've done extensive testing over the past uh, four years. On one side, we've done the reconnaissance. We've mapped the patch for the first time ever, actually. Um, and we've uh, done hundreds of scale model tests, prototypes. And uh, of course, there's really only one way to find out, and that's to actually launch it for a system, which we're doing this summer. There are some regulatory issues, but you actually have gotten the green light from the Dutch government to operate in international waters. So you Correct. know, are there any more hurdles that you need to clear to do this? Yeah, so indeed we recently signed an agreement with the Dutch government who um, actually for the first time ever has given an unmanned structure uh, permission to be deployed in international uh, waters. Uh, other than that, it's mostly technical, so of course you can have uh, seas up to 80 feet high in terms of waves, so really making sure that this um, doesn't uh, break and that it catches plastic efficiently, that's what we're putting the system uh, to test for. Now tell me a little bit about yourself. You're 23 years old. You right. This all started with a test. TEDx talk. Yeah. Um, Mark Benioff is a, is a backer of your company, the, the CEO yeah. of Salesforce. You were a Teal fellow. Right. Um, talk to me about your path. Yeah. I think I've always been uh, quite an inventor all my life. I've been making things since I was two years old. Um, when I was 12 or 13, I decided to launch 250 model rockets at the same time. So I always had my projects, but it, it wasn't very useful. Um, and then when I was 16 years old, I was scuba diving in Greece, saw more plastic bags and fish, and I wondered, what, why can't we just clean this up? And that's how it got started. Uh, you've raised tens of millions of dollars, about $40 million. Right. Is there money to be made here? No, so we are a, a non-profit entity, um, and yeah, of course it's no man's land, nobody really takes responsibility, but the idea is that eventually we'll have 60 systems out there, and basically any individual or company can, can fund their own systems. Uh, you can imagine these systems are a kilometer in length, there's plenty of space for logos, the world is watching, so that way really through sponsorship money and philanthropy money we think we can get the systems out there, and then of course we'll be collecting a lot of plastic, which we want to sell turn into new products uh, and that way cover the operational costs of the cleanup. So once they're out there, we think we can pay for themselves. Now, obviously this garbage patch looks horrifying, but why does this matter? You know, how does garbage in the middle of the ocean, how does that impact me? Yeah, there's really three problems. So first of all, there's hundreds of species that are threatened with extinction because of this, which is pretty bad. Uh, and then uh, it's an economic threat, $13 billion of damage uh, the plastic is causing to uh, fishing and tourism. And then finally, what happens is that these tiny pieces, they end up in the food chain. Uh, and with that also ends up with humans taking chemicals with them, which could cause potential health threats to, to humans as well. How much of this waste is caused by corporations and companies? I mean, you have companies like Apple out there saying, we're going to be 100% renewable. Right. Um, but what is the responsibility of the industry? Yeah, um, so we see a, a lot of fishing uh, gear out there, for example, uh, but most of the debris is actually just um, a very dispersed source. It's, it's the hands of 7.2 billion people uh, that, that use plastic and, and sometimes don't take care of it properly. Can this scale? Well, yes, yeah, so I think we, um, yeah, we're confident that once we have the first system working, that then uh, starting next year, we can scale this up to the 60 systems and really uh, rid the oceans of plastic. All right, setting sail in September. 
we will keep our eyes on you. It will be an exciting month for sure. Yeah. Boy, and how long do you think you guys will be out there? Um, so the first system will be out for, uh, for at least a year. And of course, if, if we then see it works, then of course we want to leave it out for, for 20 years. Um, but, and, and definitely we'll, we'll keep San Francisco as a base for us for quite a while. And you have a team of 70 engineers, researchers, right. computer scientists working on this. Sure. You know, how does technology need to improve to get you past that halfway point? Yeah, well, I think for me, it was at, at the beginning, I wasn't sure that people actually wanted to clean the oceans. I thought, well, you know, maybe people don't care. And then eventually, you know, when this all went viral, our project, well, then I, I think it really became clear, well, people do think this is very important. It's just that there isn't any tool yet to do it. So that's why we then focused on really developing the tools, the technologies to, uh, to rid the oceans of plastic.